Can you believe the college football playoff is already right around the corner? A journey that began back on August 26th with week zero, and we are now down to the final four teams. The four teams competing in the college football playoff, the Michigan Wolverines, the Washington Huskies, the Texas Longhorns, and the Alabama Crimson Tide. One of these four teams will be hoisting the championship trophy on January 8th. Each of these teams are two wins away from being national champions, but before they even get to the championship game on January 8th, they must win one more game, their semifinal matchup on New Year's Day, and I cannot wait to see these games go down. We are in for two epic games. And it is a perfect way to start off a new year in sports with the college football playoff. The final year where we will have a four-team playoff as next year. The playoff gets expanded to 12 teams, which I'm also looking forward to. But what a year it has been in college football, and we are still not done yet. Johnny Sports Network here to provide you with my college football playoff predictions. And I cannot wait to get into this. Without further ado, let's get right into my college football playoff semifinal predictions. I'm going to start things off with Michigan and Alabama in the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all, and then following up with Washington and Texas in the Sugar Bowl. And we're getting right into this. I am super excited. Semi-final matchup number one, Alabama and Michigan in the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. To say that Michigan has overcome adversity this season would be a massive understatement. It all started in the preseason, where Jim Harbaugh was caught by the NCAA committing a recruiting violation, buying a recruit a hamburger. And the receipt was found. And Jim Harbaugh, he self-imposed a three-game suspension. He was not on the sidelines for the first three games of the year. Then, in the middle of the season, sign-stealing allegations were brought against Michigan. And Jim Harbaugh was once again suspended for three more games, the final three games of the regular season. And this was right when they were starting to get into their toughest opponents, Penn State on the road, an underrated Maryland team, a up and down season for Maryland, as Maryland competed really well with them, and Ohio State in the game. In what was the game of the season that lived up to the hype, Jim Harbaugh was not on the sidelines for half of the season. He came back in the Big Ten Championship game, and Michigan, they made a statement against Iowa, not allowing Iowa to score a single point. And Michigan has been getting it done this season, despite facing so much adversity. They're mainly getting it done with their defense. They are first in scoring defense, only giving up an average of 9.46 points per game. They are second in total defense, only allowing an average of 239.7 yards per game. They're also 11th in time of possession. And I think that is going to be a key factor in this game if Michigan does win this game. Their running game, Blake Corm and Donovan Edwards. Blake Corm has 1,028 rushing yards on the season, 24 rushing touchdowns. Donovan Edwards has 382 rushing yards on the season and three touchdowns. And I bring up Michigan's running game because against Auburn, Alabama allowed 244 rushing yards in that game. But then the next week, in the SEC championship game, 
they held Georgia to just 78 rushing yards. Well, technically 80 because Carson Beck had minus two rushing yards. So they held Georgia's running backs to 80 rushing yards. The difference in this game for me, at least what I think is going to be the biggest difference, is going to be the Alabama front against Michigan's running game. I also think it will come down to which one of these quarterbacks is going to show the ability to make plays down the stretch, as I do think this is going to be a game that will be won in the trenches. As J.J. McCarthy and Jalen Milrow both only have one game this season where they have thrown for more than 300 passing yards. I also want to mention Alabama has allowed 43 sacks this season, which is the ninth most in the FBS. They are 18th in total defense, allowing an average of 313.3 yards per game. I do anticipate this is going to be a lower scoring game than what a lot of people are thinking. I do think that this game is going to be in the neighborhood of 21 to 17. Michigan is the second fewest penalized team, the second least penalized team in the FBS, only accumulating 38 penalties all season long. As I do think this matchup is fairly even. Michigan's offense, they are in the middle of the pack. 67 the total offense. 72nd passing and 59th in rushing. And I do think that by a score of 21-17, as I think that is the neighborhood of where this game is going to end up, I think Alabama gets the win. There is a lot of controversy here, as many are saying that Alabama did not deserve to be here, that they felt like Florida State should have gotten their spot, winning all 13 of their games. But Alabama, they are in the playoff. They are coming off of a win against the number one team of the time, Georgia. And Nick Saban, he has nearly a month to prepare for Michigan. And also... Another big factor is the coaching experience. Nick Saban, he has done this time and time again. Michigan has yet to win a bowl game under Jim Harbaugh. And I do think that is another reason why I think Alabama does win this game and advance to the national championship game. Moving on to the second semifinal matchup, Texas and Washington in the Sugar Bowl. For Washington, quarterback Michael Penix Jr., first in the FBS in passing yards with 4,218. Wide receiver Roma Dunze, fourth in the FBS in receiving yards with 1,428. For the Longhorns, quarterback Quinn Ewers, he has had a strong season. He did have to miss a few games after sustaining a shoulder injury in the Houston game. Malik Murphy did a phenomenal job keeping Texas afloat. They won in Ewers' absence, but Malik Murphy has since entered the transfer portal. And if something were to happen to Quinn Ewers in this playoff without Malik Murphy, the Longhorns would turn to Arch Manning. As you never know, any player can get injured in any given game. That's what, it's part of what makes this game unpredictable, as you just never know. And speaking of injuries, Steve Sarkeesian expects a fully healthy Texas Longhorns roster for this game on New Year's Day. Defensive backs Austin Jordan, Ryan Watts, also wide receiver Xavier Worthy, their status for this game is unknown at this point, but Coach Sarkeesian, he is confident that everyone will be healthy and ready to play in this Sugar Bowl. I do think that 
the things that this game comes down to are as follows. For Washington, can they protect Michael Penix Jr.? They've only allowed 11 sacks this season. Can Washington play disciplined? As when you're the underdog, you have to play disciplined if you're going to pull off the upset. And I bring this up because Washington has accumulated 102 penalties this season, which is the third most in the FBS. But an edge that Washington has over Texas is third down conversions. Washington is 11th in third down conversion percentage, converting on third down 48.3% of the time. Texas is 69th, only converting on third down 38.5% of the time. Both of these teams, they have one of the best receiving cores in all of college football. Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell for the Longhorns, and for the Huskies, Roma Dunze, Jalen McMillan, Jalen Polk. And both of these defenses do not defend the pass well. Texas is 94th in pass defense. Washington is 120th. And that is what I think is the biggest matchup within this matchup, is the receiving core versus the corners. Which secondary is going to defend the pass better in this matchup? Both of these teams, they defend the run really well, especially Texas. Texas is third in run defense, only allowing an average of 80.8 rushing yards per game, while Washington is 38th. And as far as my pick for this game, as I have mentioned a moment ago, I think the biggest matchup within this matchup is the receivers versus the corners. As they are the strongest receiving cores in college football, some of, if not the strongest receiving cores in all of college football. And with both defenses not defending the pass very well this season, I think it just comes down to the health of Xavier Worthy. If Xavier Worthy plays and he does not look effective, then I do think Washington will be able to win this game. But with the way Steve Sarkeesian is talking, I don't know if it's just a bluff or if he genuinely feels that everybody is going to be healthy for this matchup. I think that Texas wins the game. I am leaning towards Texas because... I do think Xavier Worthy will be able to play in this game, but if he does not, I would lean more towards the Washington side. And I'm not going to end a video with an undecided pick. I am committing to Texas. I am picking them to win this matchup for the Huskies. I just think it comes down to their defense is their defense has not been as good as I thought it was going to be coming into the year, but their defense has shown up at points when it mattered. And I have brought up the Arizona state game a couple of times because that was a game where Washington was struggling to move the ball offensively, but a pick six is what changed the momentum in that game. The big X factors in this game are going to be Xavier Worthy for Texas and Washington's defense as a whole. But the biggest matchup in the matchup, the receivers versus the corners. And that will do it for my semifinal predictions. Comment your picks down below. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. My Week 17 NFL Predictions video will be up on the 26th, the day after Christmas. Enjoy the college football playoff for those of you that do not tune in for the NFL picks. I intend to be back on the 2nd with my national championship game prediction. And 
enjoy all the football as this season is coming to a close very quickly.